Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer do-it-yourself upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot a razor blade gaming laptop that's not turning on. Either it's completely dead with no signs of life or very little signs of life. Maybe just some lights going on, uh, but nothing's coming up on the screen. The fan's not turning on and staying on. Uh, if there are any noises, they're shutting off right away. I'll show you how to troubleshoot that in this video. As always guys, please remember to like and share if this video is helpful, if you think it could help someone else. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoy DIY computer tutorials. Also, if you have any questions, please check out the FAQs below in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer. I do try to keep those updated. Uh, if you need to leave me a question or comment, please feel free. I try to get to those at least a couple times a day. For those of you that want to support the channel a little further and leave a donation, I'll show you how you can do that at the end of the video. So here I have my MSI gaming laptop. I'm going to open it up. The first thing I'm going to have you do guys is just simply press and hold your power button for up to one minute. Um, some of you, this is just going to jock your computer into starting. It's having BIOS issues or power issues. If you press and hold the power button for up to one minute, some of you, maybe 10% of you, your computer should start just doing that. So the next procedure I'm going to have you do, if that didn't work, we're going to do a power drain or power discharge procedure on your boards. Uh, specifically, we're thinking of, of your motherboard when doing this. What could be happening is that certain components on your motherboard are building up a charge of power that we need to drain. And that's what we're going to do now. So to start with, unplug your charger, get that power out of there, and we're going to remove your battery. I'll show you how to remove that battery in this MSI now. Keep in mind, before going into your computer, you want to make the environment as safe as possible to not damage anything. As you'll notice in my video, my computer is sitting on an anti-static pad. An anti-static pad or an anti-static bracelet are really good ideas to stop static from damaging components in your computer. If you guys need any suggestions on any tools or supplies that I use in my shop, uh, check out the link above. It'll be a link to my Amazon store. It'll show you some suggestions on things I use that you may want to use for your project. Okay, so my computer's off, obviously. It's flipped over. The power adapter's been removed. Uh, now I'm going to open up this bottom case. Most MSIs like this don't have those easy access panels to access components uh, like other computers have. So we have to remove this bottom case. Keep in mind things like this, guys. This is my factory seal. Oftentimes, this will void all or part of your warranty if you go into the computer. So please keep that in mind before doing any sort of DIY repair. If your computer is under warranty, uh, you may be better off to preserve that warranty and, and, and avoid DIY and instead um, apply for a warranty repair. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws. I got two in the corners or sorry, four in each of the four corners. I got a screw there, I got two here, and I got two here, and I got two down by the uh, touchpad, and of course, that nasty one right in the middle. So I'll go ahead and remove all these now. Okay, so now that all my screws are up, I'm gonna take my small metal flat pry tool, and I'm gonna go along the seam and try to pry up this bottom case. Be careful when using these. Uh, don't stab it too far in because there are components in, in there and you could damage something. Put it in as little as possible, just enough to give you some leverage to uh, bend up the bottom case. Okay, so after that's done, uh, I had a little bit of trouble over here. It was a little stiff, but again, I just went nice and slow and, and popped it up a little, popped it up a little popped it up a little in, inch by inch and that comes off. There are no components or anything on here that you have to unhook so that's a nice easy model to get into. Okay so here we are the inside of our computer there's your fan, your heatsink assembly going to your CPU and your GPU, solid state drive, RAM, battery, um, additional hard drive slot. So this is generally what you're looking at inside of your MSI computer. Um, keep in mind, not all MSI models will be exactly like this. So if you guys want help with your exact model, if something didn't look just right, um, or if you'd like some help, leave me a comment and I'll try to help you out. Okay, so here's your battery again. It's plugged in right there. I'll zoom in a little for you. Okay, so there's your battery. It's plugged into your motherboard right here. So I'm going to take a small plastic pry tool. Anytime you're working in a computer, guys, plastic is obviously better. I'm going to put that plastic tool right in there and try to slide it out. 
So that's not working so well. That seems pretty tight and I don't want to completely damage that. So instead I'm going to take my fingernails, either side of the port, so slide it out like that. Wiggle it out nice and slow. Again, avoid pulling on the wires. Wiggle it out. Okay, so that finally came out, but boy was that a pain to get out. I, I kind of wasn't prepared for it to be that much of a pain. Uh, that took a lot of effort to slowly slide uh, back and forth, back and forth. I, I kind of went back and forth between my fingernails and this, trying to get it out. Um, again, avoid pulling on the wires. You're better off just taking forever to get that out. But now the battery is unplugged. And then to plug it back in, you would obviously just slide it back in there. Yeah, much easier to plug in than it is to unplug. Okay, so after removing your battery, after unplugging your charger, you're gonna press and hold your power button for one minute to drain that power from your computer. After pressing and holding the power button for one minute, what we're gonna do is plug in your charger, leave the battery out, and try to turn on your computer. If your computer turns on, it could have just been a power buildup issue. Put the battery back in, see if your computer runs like normal. If you have to do this though without the battery to get your computer started over and over, you may wanna look at getting a new battery. Something's wrong with your battery. Now this goes the reverse way too. If you try starting your computer and it doesn't start, then we're gonna unplug your charger, your battery's already out, press and hold the power button for another minute, clean it all out again, and then this time put your battery back in, leave the charger unplugged, and try to turn on your computer. And the same thing applies with your charger. It could be just a power buildup issue, or if you have to do this every time with your charger unplugged, something's wrong with your charger, consider replacing your charger. If that test hasn't found the issue and your computer still isn't starting, we're gonna test your RAM now, see if that could be the issue. So there's your RAM right there. You've got two ports. In this model, I only have one stick of RAM. Uh, RAM is held in by these two metal pry arms on either side. It's a very standard way that RAM is, is set up. To release the RAM, we're gonna pull apart those metal arms nice and gently, and the RAM stick should just pop up. Just like that, although it usually doesn't pop out like that. As you can see here, guys, there's one long port and one short port. Uh, that means you can't flip this over incorrectly and put it in. It's got to go in one way. To put RAM back in, you just put it in there, make sure it's nice and flush, and then you press down and it clicks in place. Just like that. So to test your RAM, first thing we want to do is reseat the RAM. Uh, what that means is maybe it's just loose. Things do come loose, hard drives, batteries, RAM. Components do come loose. We just want to reseat it to make sure that it's secure. So we would take the RAM out, blow out the port maybe a little bit, put it back in, make sure it's secure, snap it down into place. Do that with your other RAM stick as well. Uh, most likely you'll have two. If that test doesn't work, then we're gonna test each RAM stick individually in each port. For this, you need two RAM sticks, assuming one of them is good. Um, odds are both RAM sticks are not gonna go bad at the same time. If you only have one RAM stick like me, you should purchase another one that's good. So what I'm gonna to do to test the RAM in, in this instance, I'm gonna remove one stick, leave one stick in, try turning the computer on. If the computer turns on, it means that stick was most likely bad, you would replace it. Um, I'll also have a video link up top as well as in the description to show you how you can buy compatible RAM. Um, or you could just go to a website. Uh, there's a lot of them out there that test your computer, scan it, and then give you suggestions on compatible RAM, uh, solid state drives, etc. If their computer doesn't turn on, then we're gonna remove the other stick of RAM, put that other one back, try turning the computer on. Same thing, if it does work, um, then you know you found your bad stick of RAM. If it still doesn't work now that we've tried both sticks of RAM, now we're gonna switch them and try both sticks of RAM in each port. So I'm gonna take this one out of here, put it in here, and try it now in that port. So again, you're testing each stick of RAM alone, but also in each port. If the RAM test hasn't found the issue either, then we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at your BIOS. Um, not all computers have what's called a CMOS battery, but that's the component on a motherboard that's supposed to keep power to BIOS even when your computer's off. If there's something wrong there, that could stop your computer from starting up. And in this computer, there's your CMOS battery. It's small, it's black, it's wrapped in plastic, and it runs under your battery and plugs in right there. That kind of plug, you would simply slide it out like that. 
Another common CMOS battery presentation is on this motherboard here. That's another common way you can see a CMOS battery on a motherboard. All you would do is, is unplug it from the port. Don't pull on the wire. Just put your fingernails on either side of that thing and slide it out. A little at a time, wiggle it out, and then you've unplugged it. Leave that unplugged for a while, and then just plug it back in. If you have this other kind of CMOS battery here, uh, the way to get this out, there's a spring here that holds it in, and a spring underneath here that pushes it up. So we're going to want to push this battery back and up. Be very careful though, because this right here is very breakable. If that plastic part snaps off, then your battery won't be secure. So just be very careful, push in and up, like that. And it comes out like that. And then again, you would leave it out for a time, and then you would slide it back in and snap it back down into place. If at this point the computer is still not turning on and it's kind of bricked at this point, uh, if you want to keep troubleshooting, there's some smaller things that we can look at, namely your charger, um, your power jack. We can start identifying specific components that could actually be faulty. I'll have a link up top, also down below in the description, on how you can test your charger if you have the equipment. If not, again, it'll be in my Amazon store, suggestions for that type of equipment. There'll also be a link up top, also below in the description, how you can test a power jack to see if it's actually taking the power from the adapter and getting it to your motherboard correctly. Other things you can look at at this point is a faulty power button. Uh, maybe replace that, check it for damage, reseat it, unplug it, plug it in. Um, also, there's a lot of other components that could be shorting out at this point, stopping your computer from turning on. In my shop, if I had gone through all these steps and I couldn't find the cause of this computer not turning on, at that point, I would remove the motherboard, I would hook it up to power without anything else, and try getting it to turn on, trying to get those fans to start, trying to get uh, a signal coming out of the, of the LCD port, maybe on an external monitor, because what can happen sometimes is a USB port, an LCD cable, a touchpad, anything could be wrong, uh, broken, shorting out, and preventing the computer from turning on. So at this point, I would strip away one component at a time and try to get the computer to turn on, see if there's anything that's shorting out um, of course, you would look and see first if there's any visual damage. If, uh, if your touchpad cable is, is burned to a crisp, or if your USB board is burned, it could possibly be shorting out. So this is the troubleshooting method you would use all these steps, hopefully the easier stuff at the beginning, so you don't have to go component by component. Uh, but that's the troubleshooting method you would use for a computer that's not turning on. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it helped you identify what's going wrong. If you need any help with the troubleshooting process or the next troubleshooting step after you've done some, uh, check out the FAQs again. I try to keep those updated with questions people commonly have uh, problems with. If you need to leave me a question or comment again, I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. Thank you so much for watching guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. And again, if you wanted to donate to the channel, support it a little more, I'll show you how you can do that now. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note.